Hi everyone, welcome back to science. I'm Miss Catherine, and today is a very exciting day because we are starting chapter three. And I always get excited at this point in our unit because it means we are so close in answering our questions and figuring out our problem for the unit. So let's get started today with lesson 3.1. As always, you will need a pen or a pencil and some paper. And if you have access to Amplify online, that would be great. Um, we also are going to be reading an article today called Carbon in the Global Ecosystem. So if you have access to a printed copy of that article from your school or your school district, um, have that with you as well. Otherwise, you can access it in Amplify Online, or you can follow along with me as I read. And here is your click path, again, to find us here today in Lesson 3.1. And pause the video and set up that paper with our heading and our Lesson 3.1 title. All right, so we have a brand new email um, to us, our, uh, our student ecologists uh, from Dr. Brian Quarry that says one more assignment. Um, so let's, let's read what he has to say. Great work, student ecologists. The Econauts had not realized that a change in the population of decomposers could have such a dramatic effect on the other organisms in the biodome. Before they plan their next biodome, they have one more question. They want to know what happened to the carbon that used to be in the air of the biodome. We know that the decrease in the decomposer population caused the carbon dioxide in the air of the biodome to decrease, but the Econauts need to know what happened to all that carbon. This is your last mission for the biodome investigation team so we're hoping you give it your best. So in this last chapter of our unit on matter and ecology, um, I'm sorry, matter and energy in ecosystems, we are gonna focus on this question. What happened to the carbon that used to be in the air of the biodome? So what happened to that abiotic carbon matter um, that's found in the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide? Remember that carbon um, is really important to two processes um, that the living things within our uh, biodome conduct. So photosynthesis is that process by which plants take in energy from sunlight, they take in carbon and carbon dioxide from the air, and they take in water to produce those ever important energy storage molecules which again contain carbon. And those energy storage molecules are important because that is how all of the living things, including the plants, um, get their energy to perform these processes um, and to grow and live and reproduce and survive. And carbon also showed up in cellular respiration um, as these living things are uh, producing that energy that they need. Um, and in this process, they're taking in carbon in the form of an energy storage molecule along with oxygen um, to produce that energy and also release carbon again in the form of carbon dioxide into the air as well as water. And this carbon in the air and this carbon in our energy storage molecules are really important to our mission of figuring out what happened to the Econauts biodome because our carbon in the air was decreasing over time. And the carbon in the form of energy storage molecules was also decreasing because our plants and our animals didn't have enough of them in order to survive. So overall, if our Econauts want to build a better biodome, they need to know not just why this one collapsed, but also where that carbon went um, so they can track it better in their new biodome. 
So let's do some reflection on what we figured out right now and warm up our brain a little bit around this mystery of the missing carbon. Um, so when you're ready, I'd like you to pause the video and either on your paper or in activity one, if you're following along in Amplify Online, um, and answer this question. What do you think happened to the carbon that used to be in the air of the biodome? As we work to figure out what happened to the carbon that used to be in the air of the biodome, today we're going to start uh, by considering this investigation question. If the amount of carbon changed in one part of a closed system, what happened to the carbon in the rest of the ecosystem? Um, so remember our biodome is considered a closed ecosystem because um, it's sealed off from the rest of the environment around it. Okay, so what was in the biodome stayed in the biodome. And we're going to consider this investigation question first today um, with an article called Carbon in the Global Ecosystem. So if you have access to this article, either in Amplify Online or with a printed copy from your school or school district. When you are ready, um, you can pause the video, read the article, and as you read, I want you to look for and summarize information that might help answer this investigation question. And I really want you to focus on not just underlining um, or highlighting text um, in the article, but to summarize what you're highlighting and what you're underlining in your own words through a margin note. Um, I'm going to at this time open up my Amplify um, and access the reading for those of you interested in following along as I read or checking your annotations to mine. So this article today is found here in lesson 3.1 in activity three that says reading and there's a link right there and i already have mine open um, so i'm going to move right to that and make it a little bit bigger for you um, okay so our reading today is called carbon in the global ecosystem scientists around the world who study earth's atmosphere have discovered something dramatic and alarming an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere they are finding that the increase in carbon dioxide in our atmosphere may have worldwide effects on our climate and our oceans, which can threaten life all over the planet. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and highlight here. They are finding that um, there's an increase in carbon dioxide. And I'm gonna add a note to that to summarize. So carbon dioxide amounts in the atmosphere are increasing. Where is the carbon that makes up all that carbon dioxide coming from? Carbon is an element that makes up a lot of the matter on earth. New carbon can't be created, so the extra carbon in our atmosphere had to come from somewhere. It must have decreased in some other part of the Earth's system. But where? Humans put carbon into the atmosphere when we burn fuels like coal, oil, and gas that are found deep underground. They are called fossil fuels. Um, so I'm gonna highlight those last two sentences there. And I'm gonna add a note to summarize what that paragraph says. And I'm going to say here in my note that the increase in carbon dioxide is caused by the burning of fossil fuels. Okay. Let's keep reading. These fossil fuels make the modern human lifestyle possible. Most of the time when we use a cell phone, drive a car, heat our homes, or turn on the lights, 
we are using energy that comes from burning fossil fuels. We currently depend on these fuels to power our lives, but burning them releases large amounts of carbon dioxide into the air. And that increase in carbon dioxide might jeopardize life as we know it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna say that, let's see, we are um, using, oh, using energy that comes from burning fossil fuels. There we go. And again, I'm going to summarize that in a note. Okay, so we burn fossil fuels for energy. Fossil fuels. Coal, oil, and gas are called fossil fuels for a reason. They are carbon rich. They are the carbon rich matter left behind by plants and animals that died millions of years ago. These plants and animals were buried deep underground before they could decompose, so decomposers never broke down the dead matter. Over millions of years, the remains of the plants and animals turned into carbon-rich fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas. The carbon that was in the plants and animals when they died is still there. It's just part of the fossil fuels. We burn fossil fuels in cars, factories, or power plants. Carbon that has been stored in the ground for millions of years is released into the air as carbon dioxide. Okay, so I wanna underline here that um, fossil, these things are called fossil fuels because they are carbon rich. Um, it's left behind by plants and animals that died millions of years ago. And this seems kind of important, um, this part about decomposers, because um, we know in our biodome that decomposers, um, the, their population reduced over time. And so it says here that um, these things were buried deep underground before they can decompose. So the decomposers never broke down that matter. I'm just gonna um, underline that um, as well because that decomposers is standing out to me. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and note here on the side that fossil fuels contain carbon from dead plants and animals that were um, not broken down by decomposers and instead buried. Hope I spelled that wrong. Eh, that's okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now the section says the carbon cycle. Earth is a closed ecosystem. There are many different regional ecosystems on Earth, but they all share one atmosphere and one ocean. Very little matter escapes from Earth into space and almost none enters. Since almost no carbon enters or leaves Earth's system and carbon isn't being produced or used up, the amount of carbon in the system does not change. If carbon is increasing in one part of Earth's system, it must be decreasing somewhere else. I'm gonna underline that, oops. Let's try that again. All right, so I'm gonna underline that Earth is a closed ecosystem. And I'm gonna note that um, Earth is a closed ecosystem because um, matter doesn't enter or leaf. And so I'm going to also highlight this part that carbon isn't being produced or used up. The amount in the system doesn't change. And so if it's increasing in one part of the system, increasing in one part, it must be decreasing somewhere else. And that reminds me of a key concept that we talked about back in chapter one, um, that when we have a system, there's all of these interacting parts and a change in one part of the system can lead to a change somewhere else within that system. And that's exactly what this paragraph is telling us about carbon within our closed earth ecosystem. All right, let's keep reading. 
So although carbon, carbon rarely leaves Earth's system, carbon moves in a cycle within Earth's ecosystem. This cycle is powered by energy. Carbon cycles from biotic matter to abiotic matter and back again. This means that carbon spends time in the air, in the ocean, in the soil, and in organisms as it moves continuously through the ecosystem. Powered by energy from sunlight, photosynthesis moves carbon from the air and water into living things. At the same time, cellular respiration moves carbon from living things to the air and water. This continues. This continuous consistent pattern of movement is called the carbon cycle, and it is essential to the survival of life on Earth. However, human activities are altering the way carbon moves through the global ecosystem. Um, so this part about carbon moving in the cycle um, around Earth's ecosystem seems important. And it's making me wonder, um, is the carbon cycle similar to the water cycle? Um, because I know uh, that water cycles throughout Earth, and now I'm reading about carbon cycling um, throughout Earth as well. And so I'm wondering if those processes are connected at all. Um, so I just captured that, that question, that thinking here in margin note, and I'm gonna go ahead and check out Let's see this image. It says that the arrows in the diagram show the pathways that carbon follows as it moves around the ecosystem. The black arrows show the pathways that exist naturally, and that large red arrow shows how humans can increase the amount of carbon in the atmosphere by burning dead matter like fossil fuels. And this is uh, reminding me of some of the models that we've created so far, um, as well as some of the things that we've seen in our sim. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there. I think that we have a lot of really good information um, to help us consider this investigation question um, so far for our work today in lesson 3.1. As we're wrapping up, um, go ahead and share your annotations uh, from the article, as well as your ideas about what you think happened to the carbon that used to be in the air of the biodome with someone else in your family or you know, email your science teacher or video chat about how awesome the science unit is uh, with a friend. And if you wanna investigate more um, about this idea of increased carbon that the article brought up, uh, you can complete lesson 3.1, activity five in Amplify Online if you have access to it. I will see you next time.